First of all, welcome to Cultural Caravan. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful. Now, just letting our guests know, we're joined by Isaiah McCoy. He's an educator at Eagle Academy in Brooklyn. And next to him is Malachi Thomas and Mr. Jordan Pierre. Now, first, let's talk to you, uh, Mr. McCoy. Tell us, first of all, about what is Eagle Academy, for those who are not familiar. Well, Eagle Academy is a... Uh, Again, an institution of learning, higher learning, and more culture-based. And I say that in the sense of we have our mantra that we're more than a school, we're a family. Mm -hmm. And we truly, truly believe in that family-oriented, <clears throat> whether that deals with direct parent-to-teacher relationship, direct student-to-teacher -to relationship, the small classroom size. It's really answering and eliminating the stereotypes of black and brown young men. Yes. Now, the founding, I know. Tell us about the founder, the mission, and the purpose. Sure. So <clears throat> the founder, David Banks, he had a vision when he was a principal in the Bronx. And he was really, really upset about the low graduation rate between black and brown young men. Mm -hmm. So immediately he answered his call to leadership, and he wanted to start an institution with all males, originally with the ninth grade. Mm -hmm. And then he felt the need to expand further and start Eagle Academy in the Bronx in the ninth grade, and then expanded even further, starting at Brooklyn, which was the Eagle Academy Brooklyn, which was the first uh, Eagle Academy to start from the sixth grade all the way to the 12th grade. Mm -hmm. And then from there, it just hit the ground rolling in every every borough, excuse me, including New Jersey, out of state, the only school out of state, Eagle Academy, Newark, they had the opportunity also now, we all Eagles have the sixth grade to 12th mm. to groom them, change, change the status quo, and again, to teach them knowledge, wisdom, and understanding from the age of 11 when we see them to when they depart and graduate. Wow. and off to college. Wonderful. You know, I had the pleasure of going to the first Eagle Academy in the Bronx when uh, uh, David Banks opened it. And again, the promise, the excitement, and just seeing the faces of the African-American young males and the Latino males there. And one of the things is that I know Eagle is opened in communities um, which are the most challenged, where you know, and certainly in the most need. And and, I, and I'm so proud of the work that uh, Eagle Academy has done in terms of expanding, and and certainly on the just looking at the faces of young men sitting here at the table as well as all the work. So I just want to commend uh, the work going forward. Now, statistically, it's said that Eagle. Graduation rate is 87 percent in comparison to nationwide of 59 percent of young men of color, and that's tremendous. Okay, the fact that um, this is an institution founded by an African American, um, and um, tell us about the organization that the the parent organization that Eagle Academy is. I think it's United Black Men, if I understand correctly. Yes. Um, so the fact that this organization is really doing some tremendous thing in terms of helping the uh, graduation rate is tremendous. Um, tell us about your role in Eagle Academy. I understand. How long have you been teaching at Eagle Academy? Uh, I've been Academy? teaching at Eagle Academy for, <clears throat> excuse me, approximately five years. This mm -hmm. is my fifth year. Wow. Okay. And uh, I really enjoy every moment, mm -hmm. every moment of it. It's a, it's a learning experience every single day. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not easy working with our boys, our own, but mm -hmm. we get through the day. Wow. You know, it, it, it's the, the, the pleasant sight is in the beginning, they have their rough stages where they act like they don't care, mm -hmm. don't want to learn. Mm -hmm. But then when you see them at the finish line at their step up ceremony, you see them at a sixth grade tie ceremony, you see them being captains and co captains of their scholarship, mm -hmm. which is their houses that they represent prominent leaders like Thurgood Marshall, W.E.B. Du Bois. Mm -hmm. Arthur Ashe, just to name a few. So mm -hmm. just, just to see that brotherhood amongst each other at such a young age is, is phenomenal. Wow. And again, as we always say, we're more than a school, we're a family, and people think that we don't exist. Mm -hmm. So it's our job to prove to, as educators, to the scholars, 
that they do exist. So tell us, Mr. McCoy, what is a typical day like at Eagle? I'm glad you asked. A typical day at Eagle Academy, uh, they have breakfast from 8 to 8.30, and they're sitting with their advisory, which we like to call scholarship houses, and they're split up in a small group of 12 to 13 young men, just so the house leader, that educator at that time, has the opportunity to, to check in with them, make sure they're having a good morning so far, make sure they have a pen, make sure they have a pencil. If they don't have it, make sure they have a shirt, make sure they have a tie, because sometimes, you know, they may not come unprepared. There's a, a room that they can go to to get that taken care of. Mm -hmm. Upon breakfast, at approximately 8.30, our wonderful principal of Eagle Academy Brooklyn, Rashad Mead, gives a phenomenal, phenomenal two to five minute message and it's theme based. So whatever's going on in the current events, he really, you know, reaches educators as well as the scholars. Mm -hmm. And it's, we call him the modern day Martin Luther King mm -hmm. of uh, Eagle Academy, but his speeches are impactful, but it kind of, it sets the tone for the day. Mm -hmm. Then we go into our morning scholarship, which is from 8.30 to 9. Mm -hmm. And then we have our period one, all the way to period six, which is our core mm -hmm. classes. Mm -hmm. And then after, which makes our school a um, little more unique, our day doesn't end at three. It ends at 4.30, because we have our extended day um, service where kids at the age of 11 and 12 are learning how to cut hair. They're learning martial arts. They're learning step, arts and craft, graphic designing. They're learning um, black studies. They have chess club, all of these extracurricular activities. Because studies show in the neighborhood in which the Eagle Academies um, are on, most of the violence happens between three o'clock and five. Mm -hmm. So Mr. Banks put in place a wonderful idea to have that extended day um, from Mondays through uh, Wednesdays so that we can keep our boys at Eagle safe. Mm -hmm. Now, that's amazing because, you know, as you said, when you think about the fact that the society puts out this very uh, negative uh, stereotypical uh, picture as it relates to black African American males, males of color particularly, yes. um, and certainly the fact that Eagle is changing that dynamic. First of all, proving that stereotype is not correct, and certainly our young men prove that. Absolutely. But also yourself, the fact that there are young African American educators who are coming back to the community, giving back, and just by being here, you are certainly a great role model for our young men. So that's another thing. How about in terms of, just talk, just talk us a little about yourself. Um, did you start your career at Eagle, or were you at other schools before you joined no, Eagle? I actually started my career at Eagle Academy. Okay. So how, what made you choose Eagle instead of some of the other schools out there? Well, it's, it's, a, it's a small world. I, um, I graduated college, Delaware State University, in uh, 2013, and upon applying for different teaching positions, um, I had an offer for a charter school, and then a friend of mine who actually went to my church, one of the uh, reverends actually said, you know, I, I, I teach basketball at, at an e at Eagle Academy. Have you ever heard about it? Mm -hmm. I said, no, never heard about it. It's an all-male school. I said, Academy, is that charter? He said, no, this is a public school. Mm -hmm. I said, wait, there's an all-male public school? He said, yeah, check it out. Mm -hmm. I went on the website, checked out um, the mission statement and the purpose, and I was intrigued. Mm -hmm. I submitted my resume to uh, Reverend Plummer, Rodney Plummer, and he, uh, he went forth and submitted that information to Mr. Mead, which is our, the principal at Eagle Brooklyn. And I had an interview, and upon three days after, I was hired on February 2nd. <laughs> and the rest is history. 2014. Yes, the rest is history. So it's uh, wonderful. So, you know, we're going to speak to some of the young men who are here okay. representing, and we're going to certainly talk to you as well. But Absolutely. thank you no for thank sharing you. some very key information with our audience as relates to Eagle. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. We're now joined by two members of the Eagle Academy family. To my right, we have Malachi Thomas, and he's in grade eight. And next to him is Jordan Pierre, grade 11. Welcome to Cultural Caravan. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Let's start with you, Malachi. Tell us about your experience. Is my understanding that you did not start off your middle school experience in Eagle. How would you compare your experience in Eagle to other schools? Don't give us a name to other experiences you've had. Well, honestly, Eagle is like no other school I've ever been in. Um, 
personally, I've been very cared for by the teachers. I feel like we're really family. I can talk to them about anything, and they really care. So if something's going on, if I can't um, focus in class, they'll realize and they'll talk to me. Um, for example, like a few days ago, I wasn't feeling as well, and Mr. McCoy was there to talk to me, and he made me feel better and like calmed me down so that I didn't do anything like irrational. And pretty much um, the grading system is pretty cool. We always get to check our grades on the internet and we can talk to the teachers about it. Um, the, the work is very great. It's challenging, but at the same time we're learning and we learn more every day, even if we're just reviewing, which is another thing I really like about Eagle. And I feel that compared to other schools I've been at, Eagle is just very unique. Yes, thank you. Yes, yeah, sorry. And for me, I've been in Eagle Academy since the sixth grade, so my experience is a little different. So Eagle is not just like an educational institution, but it's more of a family. Um, the reality is that, like as young men of color, there's certain needs that we need to be like attended to. So the so the male teachers there they serve as fathers, and then the woman teachers there serve as mothers. Many of us are raised in single households where it's just our mother being the head of the household. So being around male teachers, they serve as like their, as our fathers. Um, a saying is that it takes a man to raise a young man, to show a young boy how to become a man. So that's where the teachers, that's where their input comes in. Mm -hmm. And that's what I really do appreciate about Eagle. Now, you mentioned that you actually started your middle school, I'm going to say middle school career, <laughs> okay, yeah. middle school experience in Eagle, which is something different. Being you, that's when you, and middle school is challenging. And I know that middle school, I taught middle school, it's a very challenging time. Um, yes. And just, from what you've learned over the last couple of years, when you say what was what are some of the unique things in comparison to your friends who may not be in uh, in the Eagle Academy? What are some of the things you've yeah. taken from experience? Yeah. So one thing that I've taken is they try to instill certain values within us as young men. They want to teach us that we all have a disadvantage in comparison to our counterparts. So they want us to be resilient, to teach us to be confident, because. The reality is that as a young men of color, there, there are certain things that put us at a disadvantage. So you are judged differently based off the color of our skin. Mm -hmm. And they teach us that it just a certain, to be mindful of where you're at and how to conduct yourself. So mm -hmm. from sixth grade to 11th, you do, they afford you with certain opportunities that put you in places that if you were not in Eagle Academy would have not been afforded. Mm -hmm. So one thing I can say, I mean, I'm a part of different extracurricular activities outside of Eagle Academy that allows me to get that exposure, because exposure is important. Mm -hmm. um, it's easy to like dream to become something, but it's hard to dream to become something that you never saw. Mm -hmm. So they try to put us in places where we get to see people of our culture that are in positions that we can aspire to be in. Mm -hmm. So the good thing, you have role models. First yes. of all, you have men like uh, Mr. McCoy, who you see every day. And then you have female teachers as well, because it's important you have that balance. Um, one which I'm going to give a shout out to, Ms. Takata Walls, who is, uh, you know, really helped put this together. And we really appreciate. And, and, and so you have that foundation. Think about, in terms of, I just want you both to think of one of the most unique experiences you've had at Eagle in your years there so far. Anyone have one experience that just stands out amongst many? You want to start? You think that? Uh, sure. So, um, so, Mr. McCoy's sister is actually also a teacher at Eagle, one of my teachers, and personally, a very like a very good teacher, and I love her very much. Um, Miss, well, I was in Miss McCoy's class, and Miss McCoy she teaches reading. Mm -hmm. So while we're in reading, we're reading a book and we're doing the work. And a lot of times, Miss McCoy is very serious, but the teachers in Eagle also have personality. So it's just not like a teacher where they're just straight up with you, everything is business and all that. So we're in class and we're doing the work and Miss McCoy loves to joke. Like she, she can get very serious, but she loves to joke a lot. So Miss McCoy made a joke and had us like laughing so much, like it hurt my stomach. Like I was laughing so hard. But at the same time, after that, I realized that like her joke made so much sense and it helped me comprehend the work better. Mm -hmm. So I feel like that was a really great experience. And um, comparing to other schools, I don't feel that they do that as much, which is mm -hmm. another reason why mm -hmm. I feel that that was a very unique experience. Yeah, and you know, the good thing is you get a chance to know your teachers as human beings and not these, you know, I know as an, uh, mm -hmm. an educator, sometimes students is this us against them, but you, you now look at them as part of your family, an extended family, Definitely. so that's really wonderful. Thanks for sharing that. Right, um, for me, I've been here for a long time, so it's like a lot of experiences. 
But if I could choose one, I'm gonna choose like a tradition. So in Eagle, around like Thanksgiving, we have this thing we call Turkey Bowl, and we play football against each other. So we all split up into six houses, and as a as houses, we compete against each other, right? So it's more like just like the NFL have the Super Bowl, it's our Turkey Bowl, but amongst mm -hmm. the houses, and we compete. I think um, like what's significant about it is that we see young men like working together for like a common goal, but then we competing, but we not competing to be like violent. Mm -hmm. And I think like the stereotype is the sh there are stereotypes that are like reinforced through generations that like as young men of color we are violent, but mm -hmm. you can see that we can compete. We we are intelligent and we we're we're capable of competing with none, one another, challenging each other without it escalating to anything further. How do you take? the message and the information and the knowledge you've gotten, your experience from Eagle, and translate it into your interactions in the community? How do you take, what message, how do you, how does it help you to survive out in the community in which we live? Well, being a young black man, a, yeah, young black man, I've realized that a lot of stereotype, stereotypes have been placed on me from generations before me. and. One thing that personally Jordan has taught me is to try and defy those stereotypes. And teachers like Mr. McCoy and all the other teachers try to teach us how to conduct ourselves in Eagle, out of Eagle, and just around in general, which helps us very much because it teaches us how to, in a way, protect ourselves from the stereotypes. Because if I can prove you wrong, then you don't have anything on me. You can't tell me that I'm this way, and you can't, I can show you that I'm not. And I can show you that I'm intelligent and that Eagle is a very good school and whatever I'm trying to show you because you can't place those stereotypes on me. And that is one thing that I've learned from Eagle um, over the past year. I've learned that stereotypes are just placed on you, but if you can defy those stereotypes, then you win in a sense. Wonderful, wonderful, excellent. Yes, and it started with me. Um, one thing, my, my our principal, one thing that he always constantly try to remind us is that some people think that we don't exist. So that's one thing that we always say. Um, Mr. McCoy stayed early, like during the town halls. So Mr. Me will say, some people think that we do not exist, right? And when he says that, it, it just makes us cautious of certain things are deemed appropriate based off of where you're at, but those things that are appropriate is according to your setting. So to be mindful of where you're at, exactly, um, and being mindful of how you carry yourself and present yourself. It's, it's unfair, but one thing that people judge you on before they speak, hear you speak is based off your appearance. So that's why we have like uniform. They want us to show that we can be professional and we don't have to look just one way. And so that's one reason why we do wear uniform. And I guess that helped us in a way to understand that we also have to have confidence in who we are. Because in a society where a lot of things may be against us, we have to have that that faith within our capabilities that we can amount to a platform of success and that the isms do not define who we are mm -hmm. and that we are a dream and we are more than capable of being someone. Excellent. Well said. And uh, with that said, I want you both to tell us if you, what role, what personality, what person do you look up to as a role model and why? I'm going to start with you. Um... Personally, I have many role models in um, Eagle, but if I did have to choose one, it would probably be the principal because, um, funny wordplay, but he has a lot of principles that he <laughs> likes to teach us. So um, Mr. Mead, as we call him, he's like a very well-rounded man. So he, has, he takes care of his responsibilities. He's very truthful. He takes responsibilities for his actions, which is a very, very uncommon thing for certain men and um, certain men of color. And as well as that, Mr. Mead, like, um, let's say, displays what it is to be a man. He takes care of his family. He takes care of us. He treats us well. And he always does what he has to do. So if he has a responsibility and you ask him to do something, if he says he's going to do it, he's going to do it, which is like a real model for me because I feel like that's the type of man I want to be when I grow up. Excellent. Now, with that said, I want you to think of, he took someone inside Eagle. Let's think about someone outside. It could be history, in history or it could be someone outside of the institution of Eagle that you look up to as a role model. Yes. Um, if I'm going to think of outside, someone that I look up to. Ooh. Yeah, because that's a great question. Um, one person I do look up to, I can say, is my mother. I'll use my mom. Um, mm -hmm. Being a parent, right, raising a young man, there's certain struggles that you will see your mother go through. 
but you always see her persevere. And that's some things that she don't necessarily want to show in front of her son, but you see her still making that effort to always put a smile on your face. And I guess that I look up to that because one day I want to be able to put a smile on hers. And to understand that adversity is going to form, but that doesn't mean it necessarily have to prosper. So I do go to church and I know there's a quote. So I know they, they, God never promised us that weapons wouldn't form. He just prom he promised us that they wouldn't prosper. So I guess that's one reason why I look up to my mom because she doesn't allow certain things to deter her focus. Is you understand that she still has to raise a household. Mm. Powerful. Now, let's get to your career goals. Of course, you're not going to be an eagle forever, but certainly you're going to take the message, the learning what you've learned in eagle and share it with the world, just as our brother Dan has. Um, talk to us, tell me what your career goal is and why. Well, I have three main things that I want to do when I grow up, uh, two of which are in entertainment. So I would either like to be an actor or an artist, like a singer, for example, Chris Brown, Michael Jackson, those type of people. But um, I would also like to be a neurosurgeon. Mm -hmm. So um, pretty much Eagle has taught me a lot of things on how to conduct myself. So I feel that like in the entertainment business, a lot of people just go for acting jobs and then leave and think that they don't have to do anything else. But I feel that by conducting myself the right way, even off of the audition, even just the way people see me outside, it will help my chances. I also feel that Eagle um, provides a lot of um, uh, extra opportunities. So for example, me wanting to be a neurosurgeon, if I, um, there's certain things I can do so that I get to take um, more AP classes and I can take classes to help me in um, hospitalization and stuff like that, which I feel is a um, very great opportunity. And I feel that's what I want to do when I grow up as a career. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So for me, I'm, I'm quite undecided a little bit, but I know like some things that align with my interests. I like to help others out. So whatever I do, I know that it need to be in line with helping others. Um, another interest is also like business and then being an engineer. But and also when I get older, I will also I want to be an entrepreneur. So currently I like make my own shirt. And it's to spread a message. It says like voice the feelings of the heart. And there's a quote on the side that says use your platform to give a voice to those who don't have one. So I would like to bring awareness to certain things. I feel as if it's, it's imperative that as minorities and also as youth, that we just use our platform to give a voice to the unheard. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to ask you to think there's someone sitting on the other side of the tube who's looking at you and probably not as inspired. Maybe they feel like dropping out of school. Maybe they feel like dropping out of life. Unfortunately, there's a high rate of suicide amongst young people. If I want you to give a message to that other youth on the other side of the tube that needs some inspiration, just as you've been inspired. So one thing I'd like to share with my peers is that a common misconception is that as youth, we cannot fuel change. But those that think that way is, are those that never try. Um, it, is, it is not our differences that divide us. It, was our, it is our inability to recognize, accept, and celebrate those differences. One thing I would like to also say is to always be like who you are. So we have the reality as, as young men, we come from poverty-driven neighborhoods where we see gang violence. And those that are, the gang members, we see them being those that attract most of the females, have a certain status. But to understand that that's not the best way. We have a lot of gang members. We have a lot of rappers. We need more black lawyers. We need more black teachers. We need more black doctors and, and dentists. Like, let's focus our dreams and reorganize our priorities. Yeah. Thank you. Um, going along with what um, Jordan just said, uh, there are many um, basketball players and rappers in today's society. So for example, a lot of black males and some black females are rappers and then there's basketball players and I'm gonna tell you the truth I feel that those are like kind of in a way stereotypically the easy way out because you are smarter than you really believe you are and you can do way more than just be a basketball player and throw a ball in a hoop or just um mumble rap or you can rap and say inspirational words um I have a poem here that I'm um gonna read for you guys so I said um you try your best, but you don't succeed. But if you quit, you won't receive the better things. The only one who can reach your goals is you. Don't be afraid. We have all fallen too. When you can't do what you want to do, just persevere and you'll get through. 
Well, I can say you said it all. And let me just say on behalf of Cultural Caravan, we really want to salute you, young men, for representing the best and the brightest. Uh, when I see you, I see the dream of Dr. King, I see Marcus Garvey, Malcolm X, and many, many, many leaders and, and people who really, whose shoulders you stand upon. And definitely, I want to commend the work of, uh, I say, David Banks and our brother at the end, our wonderful teacher, leader. Um, I say teacher leader because you are leadership in terms of showing examples to our young men and that's in brother Isaiah McCoy and um, again we want to really wish you the best and success and we really want to invite you back and uh, certainly um, uh, to really give that inspiration so again on behalf of Cultural Caravan I want to thank you so much for joining us thank, thank you, you. it's thank been you. our pleasure well, I hope you've enjoyed this broadcast, and we continue to encourage you to tune in, to write, and to tell a friend. And also, we encourage you to subscribe to us on YouTube. Um, we have on-demand programs of all of our shows, as well as encourage you to become a supporter. If you like what you see and would like to continue to see these broadcasts, we need you to support, and you'll see some information on how you can support these broadcasts. But until next time, Louise Dente saying thank you. If you would like to support these broadcasts, we encourage you to send contributions to PO Box 300851, Jamaica, New York, 11430. Thank you.